The Blackmagic Studio cameras come with these super short power supplies, and it almost always means that you need to carry plenty of these around with you to power your camera. Or do you? Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to power your Blackmagic Studio camera with an Ethernet cable. Look, that's the only thing plugged in and powering my camera right now. And this method doesn't use Blackmagic's $955 studio converter. In fact, all you need is this, which cost me just $50, and this a Cat6 or Cat5 cable to power your cameras at distances of up to 320 feet or 100 meters. And this opens up a world of possibilities in terms of where you can place your cameras and what you can do with them, not to mention completely simplifying all of your cable runs. So let me show you how it's done. To give some context to the method that I'm about to show you in a second, let's first talk about the Blackmagic Studio Converter, because this thing is actually pretty awesome, and I realize there will be some people watching this video that have never heard or seen of it before, but it really could transform your setup. Now, my method provides power to the camera over Ethernet, but the Studio Converter is a unit that provides everything to and from the camera over a single Ethernet cable. It's designed to be like a SMPTE fiber workflow you would find in much bigger broadcast environments, but utilizing much cheaper and more readily available copper Cat6 cabling. And the way it works is you connect up your camera to the converter via a Cat6 cable, and then on the back of the converter itself, you've got all of the inputs and outputs that you need to connect it up to your ATEM, external monitors, and the rest of your broadcast infrastructure. So over one ethernet cable, you get power to the camera, video output to be able to send your video feed to a switcher, for example, or external monitors, two return feeds so that you can send the program output back to the camera operator as an example, time code in and out, reference in and out, talk back, tally, and of course Blackmagic's camera control so that you can do all the shading and the color calibration of the cameras as well, all down a single ethernet cable. It's seriously impressive, and for individuals and studios that can afford it, it's 100% the way to go because it keeps everything neat and simple with a one cable workflow. But there are two things about it that I think can make it even more accessible so that more people can utilize and benefit from this type of workflow. Firstly, the cost. Not everyone is going to be able to afford this at $955 per camera because you do need one for each camera. Secondly, these are very much designed for a professional SDI based workflow. There's no HDMI inputs or outputs on here. So these are not going to be easy to use with something like an A10 mini workflow. And so I think there's a huge untapped consumer prosumer market here for Blackmagic. If they created a studio converter HD mini, something the size of their regular mini converters, or in this case, an A10 streaming bridge, but they stripped it back to the bare basics so that on one side, it just has the DC power in and a 10G ethernet port, which would run to the camera. And then on the other side, an HDMI out or an SDI out to be able to go to your switcher. And then they price this at, let's say, $200. I know I'd be picking them up for every studio build that I do that uses HDMI workflows with an A10 mini. I know loads of others that would be. I think this would fly off the shelves. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you buy one for your workflow if Blackmagic did make an HDMI based studio converter so that you could have a one cable solution for all of your cameras? Anyway, the reason I brought up the studio converter is because that is what got me thinking. If that device can power the camera over ethernet, surely there's other devices out there that can too. And after doing some research, I found that the studio converter's ethernet port provides what's called type four PoE, power over ethernet, which gives up to hundred watts of power to the device plugged into it. So I went on the hunt for another device that could do the same. And that's when I found this. It's a PTZ Link 90 watt PoE++ injector, and it costs just $50 on Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description below to it if you wanna check these out yourself. So how does it work? Well, firstly, you plug this thing into power wherever you've got your vision mixer or rack set up. Then you run an ethernet cable from the PoE port on the injector to your studio camera. Then when you turn on your camera, you've got power. And as I said before, this will give you power for distances of up to 300 feet or 100 meters, all with a single ethernet cable. Now, if you wanted to, you could pair that ethernet cable with let's say a 300 foot fiber HDMI cable, wrap it in some cable braiding so it's a single core, and then you've got a super clean, super simple, long distance camera connection. Finally, you can get rid of all those extension leads. Now, before I give you a quick bonus tip and one of the benefits of using this thing, 
Let me tell you about today's sponsor, LucidLink. LucidLink is the new way for creative teams to work together on projects in real time without having to download and sync media locally. It's fast, simple, secure, and acts just like a regular hard drive connected to your computer locally, but with all the benefits of a cloud storage solution. Take this footage I've just shot in my studio as an example that I want my remote editor to get working on. Traditionally, I'd have to either send them the SSD or wait hours for all 200 gigabytes to upload to something like Google Drive, and they'd have to wait for it all to download at their end before starting on the edit. With LucidLink, they can get started straight away and could even have instant access to the footage as I'm uploading it. There's no wait to download the full file because LucidLink streams only the bits of the file they need as and when it's needed. Let me say that again. You don't have to download your media first just to start working. Instead, play your media in real time directly from the cloud. LucidLink revolutionizes the way you store and access your files, making collaboration simple and allowing you to work seamlessly together from any location in the world as if you were in the same room. No more wasting time with complicated VPN setups or slow file transfers. And because it appears just like a physical hard drive plugged into your computer, it seamlessly works with all your existing apps and tools. With your files being in the cloud, you don't have to worry about running out of storage either. LucidLink is fully scalable and can handle as much data and as many users as you need. Another benefit is that LucidLink provides you with a single source of truth for all of your files. So there's no more confusion about whether you're working with the latest version or if some of your team are working with out of date files. And it's secure. It uses military grade encryption for all your data to ensure that the only people that have access to your files are the ones that you grant access to. So say hello to seamless collaboration, real-time performance, scalable storage, global access, enhanced security, and a single source of truth for all of your files. Try LucidLink today by clicking the link in the description to get started with your free trial and let me know in the comments below how you find it. Now, as an added bonus for those of you that have made it this far into the video, you might notice that there's a second ethernet port on the PoE injector labeled as LAN. And if you plug that port into your router or network switch, it will connect your camera to your network. Now, I haven't been able to test and confirm this next part because the camera that I use is an original Blackmagic Studio camera that doesn't have streaming functionality built in. But what it should mean is that for those of you that have Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Pro G2s or the Blackmagic Studio Camera 6K, you can now power and stream directly from the camera all via that single ethernet cable. Imagine this with an ATEM Television Studio HDA ISO workflow that has the ATEM streaming bridges built in. You can now power your camera and stream your feed back to the ATEM for it to be then used and mixed into a bigger production all over a single cable. There's so many possibilities for this type of stuff in the future. And I actually feel like we're gonna see more of these network type products from Blackmagic in the near future, possibly even NAB, which is coming up in April. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on my channel to see if I'm right about that, I guess. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and wanna see more tutorial type videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you've got a comment or question about the video, get it down in the comment section below. I read through all of them and will reply to as many of them as possible. And if you need help with your setup, my email address is on screen now. Pop me an email and we can sort out a one-to-one -one consulting session to get all of your questions answered. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.